everyone, welcome back to my channel and today I am going to be talking about the biggest book that I've read this year, Duck's Newbury Report by Lucy Elden. So, uh, this is, it's been a while since I did a Booker Book Talk. I did the first three ones relatively close to when the Booker Prize was being announced or when it had just been announced. And I've had a bit of a long break at this point. Part of the reason for that is the fact that I've been reading Dax and Google Report. So I started this in February. I just finished it now in uh, May. So it took me quite some time to get through. And that's of course because it's a huge chunker and also because it's a stream of consciousness. When I started to set book out in February, I was reading it physically. And I think I had read the first 200 pages or something like this of this book physically. But so physically I could only focus on like 10 pages at a time or something like that just because it is such a um, repetitive structure. So uh, after reading this book you will never ever want to hear the structure, the fact that this and that happens <laughs> in your life again because that is basically the entire way in which it is going. So it's always like the fact that it can be easy eating a, a thorny starfish, the fact that nobody else wants to do it, the fact that grain crackers are getting sweeter. So <laughs> that means you're getting, to, it's very easy to get in a sort of trance and to start to it's to start to have your mind drift off and so while I do definitely believe that it was very calming and relaxing to read this it also meant that I found it to be mentally taxing to read this one uh, and so I wasn't really getting along very quickly through this book and then there was a read-along being hosted for it and I was like okay perfect in order to keep on pace with this one, I definitely have to read like uh, 15 to 20 pages a day. So that way at least I'm going to be pushing myself a little bit. And then if, is a, if I'll be reading along with all of these people, I will keep on track. Definitely didn't do that. I stuck to that pace in the beginning, but then after a while I slacked off and then I had to like catch up a whole lot. What got me through it in the end was the audiobook became available for scripts. Now I will say a lot of people are able to mentally exert themselves to read this, but me and Stream of Consciousness, we really don't vibe that well. So the audiobook is really what got me through it. When I was listening to the audiobook, I could get through like uh, 50 pages to 100 pages a day at some points. And so that's when I finally got quite a way through this book. Now I will definitely say that I am of the opinion with a lot of people that this could be shorter but it cannot be that much shorter, which is very, which I found to be very intriguing when I was going through it. Because definitely in the beginning and definitely in the middle parts, there are a lot of times when you're like, where is this thing going? What is being added from page to page? Couldn't this just be like, a 200 page exploration of this style of literature, but it's definitely going somewhere. It's definitely doing a lot of things. And also, uh, so for, for the first 100 pages or something, you're just in this style. You don't know what's happening. You don't know the major themes or anything like that. But as you're go going along, you will discover that certain thoughts that she brings up sort of casually, that just kind of like pop up in her mind, you're kind of circling back and back to them throughout the story. You're starting to discover like what is really at the center of this human being. And so at the end of this book, you'll have had a very big journey along with this character. This is one of the most fleshed out characters in that sense that you will ever be reading about because you will definitely feel like you understand every fiber of her being, like you understand the way this person's mind works. And through this whole experience, you've definitely been able to understand what is really important to her, what has really defined her, what are the things that uh, she keeps coming back to, the main moments in her life. But apart from that, we are really also uh, evolving towards a certain situation. So at the end of this, things happen. I didn't expect things to be happening because definitely at the beginning you're feeling like you're only reading about this person's thoughts and there's not a whole lot of like real life events seeping in, you know, you just know what she's thinking about, but you don't really know what's happening, you know, uh, and time from time to time there are these time jumps as well, and then suddenly she's like waiting on the side of the road, and you're like, but how did she get there? So that's definitely something to be uh, aware of as well, like, it might seem like this is going to be just like a one day in the life of, but there are definitely time jumps from here and there. 
Um, all in all, this book is also interwoven with the story of a mountain lion. And at first I definitely felt more uh, empathy and more sympathy for the mountain lion parts. And these were like the parts that I was mainly interested in. And uh, I would definitely say that might have still been the case, but they are very sparse throughout this book. And there is definitely an interwovenness there that is very interesting uh, when you get towards the latter part of this novel. Uh, also, of course, this book isn't reaching any conclusion. So if you're the type of reader who wants lessons to be drawn from uh, events that happen in the book, this is not going to be the case here. So, But so yeah, I definitely think that this is more of a book on a small scale, in the sense that a thousand page book can be on small scale. It's more about this one person, this one person's lives, this one life, this one person's thoughts, the um, way in which she is experiencing things that are happening in the US, certain developments in terms of um, the environment, racism, um, police brutality, uh, high school shootings, uh, the Trump administration, all of these things uh, have an impact on her thoughts throughout this book. Uh, and so it's not, and it's not necessarily, and it's not trying to draw any sort of conclusion about it. It's just presenting these to you and you can draw your own conclusion about that. It's just really looking into the thoughts of this woman uh, as a result of all the things that she's seeing happening around her in terms of big events in the US, but also in terms of the small, in terms of her relationship with her daughter, with her other children, uh, in terms of the process of grief that she had after the death of her mother. Uh, so it's very much just looking at the big and the small things of a human life. So did I think it was worth it? Um, it's difficult to say. I definitely think it was uh, an interesting experience. I definitely wasn't bored with this book at any point, even when I was just getting through 10 pages a day. My main problem at that point was that I wasn't far enough into it to know what was happening, you know, to know where the story was going. Uh, and so it kind of felt pointless to push through in a way, but I also wasn't disliking the experience itself. There were some parts around the middle where I definitely did feel like it was dragging a little bit but overall I definitely do think that there is a big payout for this book in the end and I definitely did enjoy that ending. Um, but do I think it's worth chugging through a 1000 page book? For me personally, no. I don't think I will ever reread this book. Um, I'm happy that I read it and I had this experience that I can share with you guys now and that I share with all the people who have read this book before. But uh, will I recommend other people to do this? No, not necessarily. If you are somebody who is very, who thrives on character exploration, who really wants to be able to fully explore a person's psyche and a person's motivations, uh, then this might work for you. Do know that it is stream of consciousness and so that's not necessarily what you're looking for. But yeah. It was interesting, I will say that. And I will say that out of all, so out of the four books for the shortlist that I have read at this point, I will probably, I would probably put this even at spot number one. And the reason for that is going to be that I did definitely enjoy uh, Girl, Woman, Other by Bernardine Evaristo, but I had some problems with that, preference wise. And I don't have those with these. I think it's not my type of story necessarily. It's not something that I'm looking for. But I do definitely think that it does what it's supposed to do very well. It might do it a little bit too long in parts, but also not so long that it becomes a problem. And it did take me down a direction that surprised me and that I was very interested in seeing. So um, yeah, take that as you may, uh, take, take any part of that uh, discussion that touches upon your reading taste uh, and then decide for yourself, maybe watch some other reviews as well. So yeah, these are my thoughts on Ducks New Report. I will also not be drawing any conclusions from my thoughts. My main problem with it is just that it's you know, it didn't, it didn't touch me, it didn't 
elevate itself for me. It was a very interesting book, a book unlike any that I've read so far, I think. A very enjoyable experience, um, but it's not something that I will be looking for in other books now, trying to recapture this experience. So in that sense, for me, it kind of fell short personally, but I have seen a whole lot of people vibe with this book. So yeah, let me know down below if you've read this book, uh, what your thoughts were on it. Did you have problems with it or were you one of the people who was like absolutely uh, surprised and, and enchanted with this book? Uh, and if you haven't read it yet, do you think you'll ever uh, get into a book like this? Uh, I know I haven't necessarily sold it very well, but I also think it's the type of book that's it's difficult to sell you on. I think the majority of people reading this book now are reading it for the experience, knowing that people have been reading this huge chunker for the Booker Prize. Uh, I think people reading it now are those people who want to force themselves to read a 1000 page book in stream of consciousness. And yes, I'm definitely part of that club. So yeah, see you guys for the next one. I will hopefully be finishing the Booker Prize shortlist in the month of May. So hopefully Booker Talk 5 and 6 will also be coming your way. And if I do so, uh, I hopefully will also be bringing out a video at some point in which I will be giving you my thoughts, my final thoughts on the Booker shortlist and hopefully even on the Booker long list. But so yeah, see you guys for the next one.